This video focuses on uh, signed binary numbers. Up to now, we've been talking about uh, numbering systems, including binary. And in the case of binary, we focused on only positive numbers. So, for example, uh, we always implied that the numbers we are working with is positive. So let's say positive 25. Um, but we have really not talked much about what about minus 25? How do we represent that? So um, plus 25, um, so they had to figure out how we're going to represent plus and minus. Let's say if I have an 8-bit number, let's, let's stick with an 8-bit number. When we were looking at 25, it would have been basically uh, 25 is made out of, uh, if you do the conversion from binary to decimal, we will have a 16 um, plus an 8 and then 1. So it would be 9 plus 16, which is, gives us 25. To make it 8 bit, we put additional 0 in it. So typically when we're working with this, we try to get a byte worth going. So this is one byte, 25 plus 25 represented in one byte. And, and if I have needed to represent only a positive number, then I would go from 0 to 255, 255 being when all of these are 1 there. So this is a 25, and just, just common sense, uh, when folks started working on a computer system, they said that we need to be able to both represent plus 25 and represent minus 25. So one of the approaches they had, they said, why don't we just go ahead and reserve this thing as a sign. So a zero would be a plus and a one would be a minus. So they, they decided, okay, let's keep that a sign. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the rest of the bit. So this is, this was eight bit, now we got seven bit for magnitude. So this gives us, this, this seven bit of magnitude gives us what the value is and then the, the most significant bit, the eight, seventh bit, or the eighth bit in this case, gives us uh, whether it's plus or minus. So if it's zero, it's plus. And so now how would I represent a negative number? A negative number I would represent by putting a one in here, and then the magnitude would continue to be what it was over there. So the magnitude would still be 25, which includes this is a 16, this is an eight, that's 24, and a one is 25. So that's basically was the first numbering system in the computer where they could use a byte, or if you can make this bigger, but for now let's use a byte, and they were able to represent a uh, plus and a minus. So that was the first one. Actually, is not really being used very much anymore. Um, we've learned better ways of doing this. In this particular, so for the sine magnitude case, uh, what happened was that now I can represent a number, for example, with 8 bits, I can represent, so for an 8-bit system, I can represent, the smallest number I can represent is minus 127, and the largest number I can represent is plus 127. This scheme, this approach to things are referred to as the sine magnitude format okay and that was very helpful and was being used for a fair amount of time but probably 30 years ago or so people kind of gave up on it and went a different route because they found a more efficient way of doing it but before they got to the more efficient way they took an intermediate step and the intermediate step was they could call it the um, so typically, so, so this was the sine magnitude. The next approach folks came up with was, is called the, uh, very commonly it's called one's complement. You may also hear um, this referred to as um, DRC, which stands for diminished radix ok 
Okay. And that simply says, okay, if if my positive two, in this format, this this particular format, if if my positive number twenty five is written as zero 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 one one zero zero one, then my negative twenty five simply is gonna be. I'm gonna complement every bit, so I'm gonna get a zero one one zero zero one one one, and as you can see, still. I can recognize um, I can recognize that this is the magnitude here and this is the sign and the nice thing is if you look at it the positive numbers are exactly the same regardless of which format you are in but when you start looking at the negative number you still have the most significant red representing sign but this is no longer for the negative number this is no longer the magnitude you can't just use that if you want to find out what this negative number is you have to complement it back out so you got one zero zero one one zero 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 and now you know this was a negative number you have to complement it in order to find the value and now you know this was a negative 25. Um, so so this is called the ones complement it was used for a while but had some deficiencies so that in order to fix that uh, what what they decided to move to another formatting system so now we're looking at our third formatting system and this is the one that basically has taken hold and is pretty much the format is used is called twos complement and basically this is the format that is used throughout the computer system these days this is called the radix complement or radix complement abbreviated as RC sometime okay now um, this um, again much like all the other systems the plus 25 is written exactly the same regardless of which system you are so when it's plus nothing changes and the way we know plus is the most significant bit the sine magnitude is sine is zero and the magnitude is basically the same as what we've done before, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so, so the plus doesn't change. How about the minus? The minus 25 is actually represented by um, taking this plus the plus 1 and then complementing and then adding 1 to it. So let's, it's a two-step process. So step one is doing one's complement or complementing everything much like we did with one's complement so it would be one one oops one one zero zero one one and so if i said there's a second step to get to two's complement you add one so we just simply add one to this oops sorry this uh I'm missing the last one down so one zero zero one zero one one zero one zero 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 okay now I'm gonna add a one one plus zero is one so I get and this represents it's a negative number and read this represents the equivalent of the magnitude uh, but remember that is in two's complement now Look at the power of this. If I want to find out what the negative number is, all I have to do is I have to follow the two-step process again to find out what the number is. So, so, so if I come here, step one, what was the step one? Step one is the same as it was up there. We complement everything. So I got zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero, one. Okay. And then step two was I'll just add a one to this. Um, I'm sorry, this is zero as well. One zero, one zero, one zero. So I'm complementing everything. And then step two, the same as it was before, just going to add a one to it. So if I add a one to it, you got one zero zero one one zero zero zero. So this is one of the powers one of the many benefits this provides for computer systems is one 
when I need to go to two's complement and when I come back from two's complement, they're exactly the same. The other thing to also notice, minus numbers are the only one that affected. Plus numbers are nothing has changed uh, so far. So, um, so that's, that's one of the benefits of the same system. By the way, uh, there's a quick way of doing this. And let me go ahead and do that just, to, just so you have seen. If you want minus 25, you can write first thing just a simple binary. Um, binary number which is minus just a binary of 25 which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. and then you can come back around if this is called a quick inspection which is basically a shortcut quick inspection so what you do you start looking from the right hand side from this direction you leave the first one the first one you encounter on itself and everything before it as it is and then you come back and you complement everything else now we've got the two's complement or the radius complement of that number this is a little faster than the previous method it does exactly the same now the beauty of this method is that you can also do a quick inspection to come out of these things. Notice, uh, before I go forward, the minus was here because I was representing, I was representing a, um, in, in the binary format with the sign keeping separate, but once I go to the RC, there's no need to put a sign in here um, because you, your sign bit is indicating that you are negative. Now the interesting thing is I can use the same technique to come out of two's complement and go back to the binary if I want to know what number this really is. I can I can basically say, okay, the same idea, come from the right side, leave the first one you encounter by itself, and then complement everything else. Oops, zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero. And now you've got 25 again. Okay. So this this method is called uh, uh, two's complement. Uh, the other benefits as we get into arithmetic, you will find out that when I have two's complement, all I need is an adder because I can use an adder and a complementer to do a subtractor. Once I know how to do add and subtract, multiply and division are the same thing. So once I've built an adder, I have the whole ALU, the whole arithmetic logic unit made up. And uh, um, so, so what we've done so far, we introduced the idea of a, um, a sine magnitude. This was the first one. You represent sine and magnitude. That's easy for humans to understand, but computers don't use it very much. The one's complement was an intermediate step. It's really not used very much. Two's complement is the way the computers operate on plus and negative and positive numbers and do all their additions and subtractions. So. Um, Again, as for everything, 25 plus 25 is written all the same, regardless of which format you're in. The minus number is the one that you have to go through a process of one's complement and two's complement. In this case, two's complement. The other advantage of two's, oh, and then we have this method where we complement all the numbers, add a one to it, and that becomes our two's complement right here. And then in order for us to be able to go back to the binary number, equivalent will do that two's complement again which is complement every digit and add a one to it there's a quick inspection which is a shortcut of doing exactly the same thing where we'll take um, the number and go from the right hand side and uh, we will just copy all the bits down until we hit the first one and including the first one we're going to copy and after that we're going to complement everything complement means we go from zero to one one to zero that brings us to the end of the sign binary number and the different format we use for them.